Okay, so uh, let's uh, move ahead on this. You know, like, uh, I heard you saying something very interesting uh, here, and you said there is something like business model innovation uh, in India which is unique, and that is where Jugaad is happening. Could you give me some insight into that uh, whole idea? Mm -hmm. Because business model innovation is the next big thing, or that's the way the business is going to be. Sure. One of the key words in India is the diversity. We know that, right? So when you have diversity, one of the important things is that you know, a mass-produced model doesn't work. So one of the reasons you have more kind of business model innovation happening here is to find a way to create more value for more people, knowing that these different people are in different parts of India with different needs and different kind of backgrounds. So let me go straight to the example. So I like the example of Selco, which is a solar energy distribution company, uh, which is headquartered actually in Bangalore. And they have distributed about um, uh, 150 uh, solar lantern systems in rural parts of India, predominantly in the southern part of India. And what's 50, that's right, under 50,000. And what's amazing about this is that each of the solutions is personalized, right? So for example, they have a solar lantern that will have a particular shape which is suitable for a school children, school's child who want to do his uh, homework in the evening, right? And then the solution will look a different way, more like, you know, a, a helmet for a farmer who needs to collect rosebuds between midnight and 2 a.m. So there is already a product innovation. First message. Second level is that the business model innovation. So what they have figured out is that because these solutions are deployed in these far remote parts of India, the challenge is first of all, as uh, Arishande, you know, who is the founder of Selco says, it's like giving a farmer an elephant to feed. It's too expensive. So you need to find a way to use some kind of payment mechanism which is more affordable. So then the question is, if the you know, lantern has a you know, physical problem, solar lamps have some physical you know, kind of uh, maintenance problem, how do you fix it? So what he did is essentially he trained these micro entrepreneurs in these villages who actually go every day. So they, reach, they charge these you know, lamps in the morning. And then they go door to door and actually install them. And then they collect payment the next morning. If there's any problem, they can locally you know, fix it as well. So what I like very much about the example is that this is a kind of business for innovation because Mr. Kapoor works a lot with Michael Porter. We talk a lot about shared value, right? We talk about hybrid value chain, which is how do you combine this kind of for-profit thinking where you don't do charity, you offer you know, solutions that are paid, low-income people. At the same time, you create economic value as well you know, for the society. So this is a kind of a hybrid value chain that creates win-win-win kind of value for everyone because it creates jobs for these micro-entrepreneurs. It contributes to the sustainability, not environmental, but also socioeconomic sustainability of the local communities, and also brings value to this you know, end users, whether it's the school children studying, or the farmers, or uh, you know, other uh, you know, people having other economic activity. The other example I like very much is, uh, is a G, general, you know, G Healthcare. Uh, we talked about the devices, right? That's a product innovation. But they're doing some amazing business model innovation, whether it's in terms of partnership models with the state governments, uh, adopting a whole hospital in Tamil Nadu to trial out you know, new service models, uh, new payment mechanisms, pay as you go, where they don't sell you equipment, but they have you pay per scan. You know, for every scan you make, you pay you know, as a service model, right? Pay per, per, per use kind of model. And then they've done something incredible lately, and I will just shorten this thing, is essentially they find a way to partner with the local entrepreneurs to run these cyclotrons that produce a particular glucose, which is injected into patients before they undergo a scan in a PET CT scan for cancer detection, right? So they found a way, a Jugad way essentially, to decouple the cyclotron from this scanner. So the cyclotron is operated by the entrepreneurs in one place, and then they produce the glucose, which used to be imported, by the way, which means that it decays very quickly and it's a loss of value. And now it's locally made, locally produced, and given to the hospitals in a just in time fashion. Okay, so. Great, uh, Navi. In fact, let me just go straight to Anurag here. Anurag, during your introduction, uh, when, we, when you were introducing the talk, you said that you are actually using Jugaad in your office regularly. Probably you name it differently, but could, could you give me some insights as to See, what, what it is? I come from the media business. I, uh, so I, first, I'd like to give you two examples of innovation in the media business, and there's a company called Times of India. I'm sure most of you know uh, what that is. Uh, but you know, they did two very innovative things, and one is called the media net. So it's, for those of you who are not aware, it is, it is like a paid, editorial is the wrong word, but it's a paid platform. But it's a very innovative way of doing content, right? And you're doing content where if 
restaurant owners or brand owners want to mention the brand, they can mention their brand, right? But it also has a clear disclaimer which says it is, you know, commercially produced content. And there is an editorial filter there. So it's not that you can uh, pay, for, uh, pay for it and get into it. So if you have editorial content that passes the editorial filter, then what you have to pay for is lesser. And again, that's, you know, that's a fairly large business, probably 40, 40 million brawler business already for Times of India. And HQ always used to say that we would never do that, you know, have started to do that, right? Second is something called the private treaties, which is now called the brand capital. I think that's very innovative, where uh, for entrepreneurs who want to build a brand and cannot afford media, especially, you know, mainstream media, which has high impact, uh, but possibly uh, would be big companies in the future if they got the brand building right. Uh, Times of India came up with the concept of giving advertising for equity. So I think that's very innovative. Just they created a category of advertisers that didn't exist. Uh, and really advertising grows the economy. So advertising is not just growing the bottom line of the, or the top line of the media company. I mean, advertising creates consumption. So these are two very innovative. Second is the fact that he talked about you know, social impact business initiatives and now they need to be sustainable. Seva, much before we talked about social business models, Seva was very innovative. How, even if you look at how they procure, how they deploy. Mm -hmm. Second is even Fab India, mm -hmm. when it happened. I mean, Thank today uh, it's a fairly large organization. Amul, I mean, really it may not fit into the word of Jugaad innovation, but really, when they started, these are very good. Coming back to what I do, I mean, honestly, where we are, we can't take shortcuts. But again, we have limited resources. So in that sense, whether we, when we are developing a digital platform or, you know, partnering with you. So I can't think of Jugaad in the sense of, but yes, when I started Exchange for Media, I can say we had very frugal resources, so we were forced, especially buying technology. I think because, uh, you know, open was not big that time, so you paying for Microsoft licenses was tough. So in areas of technology with Jugaad, but mm -hmm. I think when it comes to doing content or really creating the surround in it, you have to follow processes and you have to do it at a certain So scale. what you're clearly saying is that you need to maintain value in what you're actually giving. You yeah. might change the backend processes, you might improve on them. Absolutely. Fair. So moving on to you, Kevin. Kevin, uh, we've actually had some very interesting <laughs> chats on uh, Jugaad <laughs> and things. But do you think this whole idea of Jugaad is about being obsessed with scarcity and then thinking about it? Well, I think that um, one of the challenges is that you end up kind of so focused on, um, on kind of, I guess, I guess I'd say this way, that it, you know, it's said that the good is the enemy of the great. Mm -hmm. Right, um, and so I mean, you talked about some of the negative aspects of, of Jugaad, but the actual, the, I mean, the, the thing, I mean, you've you've kind of redefined the f the word. Um, I mean, it's a, it's essentially a curse word, right? I mean, you call something Jugaad when you're saying, well, it's kind of crappy, but it works, right? And you don't really mean that anymore, and, and understand that, but but in its kind of original sense, right? It's about you know, it really is about making do. It, it, it's what my my dad has always called close enough for government work. Right, yeah. uh, um, you know, it, it's the same idea, and and so I, I think the interesting challenge becomes that while scarcity is incredibly important, and you know, and lean design and lean manufacturing, and a lot of these ideas have been around for a long time, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, so so I think the 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 challenge becomes how do you kind of truly optimize, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. not just about scarcity, but it's more about Absolutely. optimization and mm -hmm. building value mm -hmm. and really trying to figure out. How do you get things that will work and will work well and aren't necessarily just cheap? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's so important. Uh, building on this, you know, you, you have actually been working in the area of urbanization in India and you've actually found some bits of Jugaad in action, as you say, as a person. So could you give me an example and how do you think that mindset has to change? And probably the solutions which could be frugal in nature and that's exactly what Navi and Jaydi probably mean. So I, I, my PhD is from Carnegie Mellon and one of the things that um, uh, Raj Reddy, who was the dean of the School of Computer Science there, helped kind of make Bangalore happen, right? And Carnegie Mellon doesn't really talk about it because the whole outsourcing thing isn't necessarily popular in the States. 
But one of the first things that they did was Raj came and they said, you know, we want to do, start doing more outsourcing stuff and things that are going on. And Raj says, you know, okay, but if you want to bring companies from the West to India, you're going to need reliable power, right? You're going to need actual satellites, right? I mean, the reason Bangalore was full of satellite dishes is because there were no other, there were no, no landlines, there were no ways to communicate. Um, and I think that was an important aspect right, to understand that. And I, and I look at, you know, here in Delhi and Gurgaon, right, oh, um, where I'm with you, it, it, eight hours a day you're not going to have power. Yes. One third of the day there is no power. But yet everyone's like, well, we put in batteries, we do this, we do that, we, ma we, get, you know, we make it work, right? Uh, you know, uh, some subdivisions, you know, housing complexes will put in their own generators. This hotel, I guarantee you, has a generator. Right? The lights will go off, the generator will kick on, it will crank out more, more diesel, more fumes, more wonderful pollution in the air of Delhi because the power systems don't work. But they work enough. Right? And that's where I think the urbanization of India is very Jugad. Right? Because it's like, well, you can get by. Right? You, you learn to live with it, you learn to accept what's going on, um, and, and then you don't fix it. Right? You know, I mean, you've got you know, the head of the AP saying it's okay to steal energy. Well, that doesn't help solve the problem either, yeah. right? So, but th that I think is a great example of how where it's like, well, yes, it's, it's working, um, but it's not really good. And I think the, the price that gets paid there is quite significant. Mm -hmm. So it's about the mindset issue as we actually move ahead. Yeah, it really is. I mean, so Anurag, yes, you have to say something. Like, you have to counter it or you have yeah, to... Yeah, I, I don't so. agree with him. The way Kevin is describing his Jugaad is bad. I mean, Jugaad is a bad word, it's a four letter word. And, you know, when you read uh, Navi and Jerry's book, Jugaad is, in that way, sexy. It works. That's it a works. No, yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but point is, in their book, it is about filling the need when it is needed with less means. I think, in fact, before they wrote their book, probably Jugaad, we always use the word Jugaad, but not in the way they use. So, in my view, uh, they made Jugaad acceptable. They made Jugaad a way of life. They lent legitimacy. So I think Jugaad when it comes to innovation or making things work is a very positive thing in especially the examples you gave uh, and the examples in your book. right? I think what Kevin talks is a very negative manner. Those, those are shortcuts. Those are make do. That's very different from what you know Navi and uh, Jerry have talked and they can tell you more. Oh, no, I, I agree with that. I, I think as, as I said I think what What's happened, I think they've, they've kind of redefined it though, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the original intention of the word itself mm -hmm. is, I mean, it's a mm -hmm. contraption, right? I mean, it, it's a, it, is a, it is a, you know, gray tape and bailing wire kind mm -hmm. of solution to something. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I, and that's where I, so I think it's like, well, I think of the original usage of the word rather than, rather than if they've sure. used it, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Jay, the building on this, you know, like, there are two points of view that are coming. One is a mindset issue and the other one is that there is legitimacy and sexiness to this mm -hmm. whole world. So how, how would you really uh, look at these, uh, this yeah. dichotomy? So, you know, it's very interesting that uh, the first time I think I actually took the word Jugaad in the context that we use it seriously was when somebody at Cisco in Bangalore in their globalization center east used the word to describe what they were doing. This must have been about four, four or five years, years five, ago. Five years ago, yeah. And, you know, we, were, we wanted to know what was happening in Cisco, what they were doing there. And, you know, they were the, basically the Cisco uh, center in Bangalore is going to be, was intended to be the global hub for telemedicine. And, so on. and this guy used Jugaad. And I almost, you know, sort of laughed. Like, you're, you're not serious. And then I realized he was serious. And what he meant, then, then I tried to understand what he meant. And he meant, Jugaad in the sense that we have come to write about it. For him, it was this mindset. It was a mindset that was somehow capable of making do with very little. And then perhaps in a, in a company like Cisco, they felt that if you could get that and then marry it to all the other process excellence that was in Cisco, you had a world-beating combination, right? So I think that was when I myself started taking it seriously. And you know, we wrote blogs about it. But we never really ourselves, I think, wanted to push the word too much. It was interesting that it was when an agent, an agent wrote to us and said, why don't you write a book about Jugaad that we started to seriously use that word and then seriously think about how we might sort of look at it in a, and make it more legitimate. So that's and, a little and bit and of the agent, And the agent is an American, by the way, and she lived two years in Delhi. And she said, firsthand, I saw Jugaad. I saw the good, bad, ugly Jugaad. 
And I'm aware of the ugly jugar. I think Kevin is right. I mean, no, jugar use the bad intention. Remember that framework, right? Leads to bad karma, right? I mean, that's classic, right? We don't, you know, condone that kind of jugar. But she also witnessed that kind of resilient spirit of some entrepreneurs who applies to jugar to create value for others at the same time, positive value, right? Without breaking law, without creating pollution, and I totally agree with Kevin on that as well. So that's the part that she picked up. And even for us, when we got the email, uh, I don't think we want to write about Jugad. And she said, no, it's not Jugad I'm interested. I'm interested in Jugad innovation. Great. So, so yeah. uh, you know, last two questions. In fact, you've talked about MOOCs, Jackie. How do you think education is going to get changed? Could you get, delve a little more into it? Because I think in terms of what you're saying as an innovation uh, enterprise, we can fundamentally alter the inequality that exists in education in this country. So a any insights? On so you know, great question. And if you just go back to what, how we were trying to define Jugaad, how we define it. Frugal, flexible, inclusive, those three components. MOOCs have all those three. So it is frugal like you know, nobody's business, right? It's free, basically. I mean, you can take advantage of established existing uh, infrastructure, the fact that Many people, now of course, lots of people don't have access to the internet, but increasing numbers have access to the internet, if not through PCs, then through tablets and now mobile phones. So it's very frugal and, and it's often free. So somebody sitting in a remote part of India could potentially get access to what's taught in Stanford or Harvard or anywhere around the world, right? So that's one thing, it's frugal. It's highly flexible because you can learn at your own pace, unlike in a classroom. You can stop and start, you can go back, you can talk to friends, you can try and work it out yourself, all this kind of stuff. You can't do that in a classroom. And it's inclusive. Think of the hundreds of millions of people around the world who would like to, you know, I don't know, attend a course of Michael Porter's, for instance, but can't. Okay? They can now, potentially. I don't know if he has courses online. He's but starting yeah. a course online yeah. called yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this is frugal, flexible, inclusive. And in our definition, it's a jugar which has transformational, uh, you know, possibilities. I would just add one thing to education. I think Jadeep said, which is the kind of traditional uh, education where you learn, you know, knowledge kind of thing. But there's another approach to education which excites me the most is learn by doing. And that's where Jugat comes right down to it, right? Let me give you a couple of examples. And I really want to make sure that Anurad and the Stanford Biodesign guys explain. So that's really about that, right? It's not about, okay, you learn all the things at AIMS, right, which is fantastic about the body and everything. But in reality, it's about, you know, if you're a physician, you have a lot of knowledge about, you know, how to, you know, solve, you know, diseases, et cetera. But how do you go from being a physician to this kind of physician who actually makes stuff, you know, tools or devices that actually help in your day-to-day -day job? Well, either you can get them from, you know, from medical device companies, but they may not always be ideal, right? So then you have to start kind of thinking, well, how can I do it myself, right? So what I'm getting at is that there's a new way of learning, I think, is by doing. And I think this is something that we don't think about often. But now what I tried to say with the, you know, with the Fab Labs, for example, and these kind of new platforms, is there are now ways to learn by doing. You can make these prototypes like the Stanford students did. So I kind of see that uh, the new approach is what I call student entrepreneurs. I know it sounds a bit, you know, in India we separate Saraswati and Lakshmi, I know that. Um, but think about what if we could bring them together, right? The average age of entrepreneurs is going down. I don't know if you know that. Now there are kids launching startups in high school now at nine, nine years old. Yeah. And that's possible because you have these platforms where you can kind of you know, launch these you know, kind of solutions. So I think learning by doing uh, versus just in a classroom setting, whether it's a physical or online or virtual, that's something that I would like to see in India as well, you know, this combination of you know, doing and learning as well. Sure. So you actually were talking about Neil's uh, idea, Neil Gershenfield's idea on Fab Lab, and you, you've talked about it twice. Why do you think we have mm. not been able to create a Fab Lab out of India, and why did it actually have to happen out of MIT? Yeah. Uh, what's the reason, and why do you think we're lacking? And if you're uh, actually celebrating Jugar and yeah. something India, sure. why yeah. is it that Fab Lab uh, did not happen out mm. of India? Mm. You know, I think the high-tech way of doing Jugar, which is what Fab Lab is, couldn't have taken off here, right? But having said that, I think that the artisanal way of doing jugad. So this is fascinating what Kapoor is hinting at. The Nordic regions, uh, Finland, just started three weeks ago. It's called the Center for Frugal Innovation. So this is where I think India should aspire to. Let me explain. So what they are saying is that, sure, we can do Fab Lab. But uh, Kevin's point, if it's like a makeshift solution, it's not sexy. How do you succeed that? Well, you need something called design. So Nordic regions say, we will take some crappy product from emerging markets, We'll put the design on top of it, add some technology sauce to it, 
find a nice business model and sell it in Europe. So, so that's how you know, we can excel in India is to say, you know, we may not be excellent in high tech stuff, but we can bring in other stuff, which is you know, the kind of artisanal kind of sensibility we have. So that combination would be something you can try out here. Absolutely. In fact, I must share that uh, I'm talking to Neil Gershenfield, and we are probably going to open the oh. Lab Lab in Chandigarh uh, with him. Make it an Indian version of it. That's Absolutely. all I, I implore you to do that. It has to be an Indian flavor to it. Absolutely.